good start. We're off to a good start here. How's everybody doing tonight? Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. We got a fantastic show for you, folks. It's about beans. <laughs> well, didn't know you were so. I won't go there. <laughs> beans are one of the oldest and most nutritionist foods on the planet. But, you know, not everyone realizes just how many types they are. Beside, I'm going to show you how many types there are, or at least a bunch of them. We're going to do a couple of really kicked up dishes tonight with beans. First one, crazed right now in this country and all the Japanese restaurants using soybeans. We're going to show you my favorite edamame. <laughs> Got quiet in here. A very unusual dish that I'm going to show you using Chinese long beans, fantastic. And a classic dish with gabonzo beans. You know what that is? Yeah. Well, let's talk about something exciting. How about, how about Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band? I don't know. <laughs> Who I'm going to beans over here. What's, what's happening? <laughs> I'm going to show you a little combination also about pork and beans. Right? Classic combination. Except mine is going to be some slow-cooked white beans with pan-fried pork chops. And you may say beans for dessert. I'm going to show you how to make a sweet red bean paste that we're going to do with ice cream. Fantastic. We're busting with beans tonight, right here on Emerald Live. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Good to have you all. Welcome, welcome. Hi there. You got the bean seed over here, huh? Look at all the different beans. Red beans, black beans, small navy beans, cranberry beans. It's amazing how many beans, fava beans. It's just amazing how many beans that we, uh, that we consume. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Nice to have you. Nice to meet Where you all from? Cape Cod. Oh, that's a good place. Yes, it is. Nice to have you all. Folks, how are you? Hi, Good. fine. How are you? Where are you all from? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. All right. Pittsburgh. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. How many people have, uh, have eaten edamame? Really? That's all? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it isn't as popular as I thought. <laughs> but it will be after I show you how easy it is. Well, edamame is with, uh, made with soybeans. Uh, originated in Southeast Asia, uh, but for some reason, we grow an incredible amount of soybeans here in this country. I mean, down south, in Mississippi and Louisiana, lots of soybeans. You can buy them frozen and or fresh. And there are kind of a little way uh, that in Japanese restaurants that you can kind of get started these days. And I'm just going to show you. They're usually just steamed and served. I'm going to show you uh, what I do to them as a great little snack. Soybeans are really great for you. And they're the most consumed bean on the planet. Yeah, soybeans. Check this out. You can eat the pod when it's young. You can eat the bean. When they do them in... Soak them, you can get soy milk, which is popular these days. From soy milk, they make from the milk tofu. You can ferment it, which is where soy sauce comes from. 
and then you can grind it and actually have soy flour. So it's really amazing how versatile it is. These are soybeans that are fresh. And the best way that I like to do them is I like to steam them. Not very long, maybe four or five minutes. I just kind of steam them. Or you can also just put them in some salted water. Works well. And then, how I like to finish them, after four or five minutes, I have a swap here that are cooked now, four or five minutes. This is how I like to serve them. I toss them in a bowl with a little bit of sesame oil and some sea salt or kosher salt. That's how simple it is. Soybeans, edamame. And I just sort of serve them on a bowl like that. Have you had them before? Never. Never. Try one. <laughs> the best thing to do is to just pop. You don't eat the whole, just eat the beans. So you're going to pop the little bean out of them. Oh, that's very Tasty, good. huh? Mm -hmm. Can I eat it with my hand? Sure. <laughs> this is a real show here. Have you ever had them? No, oh, never, never. Try one. Can you just pop the... Okay, I want to come. Here we go. Got it? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So we'll pass these around here in a minute. Mm. Now, let me show you um, another dish. Real quick, I've got a little bit of basic olive oil here that I'm going to get in this skillet. I've got some pork, ground pork, because pork fat rules, right? Yeah. And to that pork, I'm going to add some soy sauce and some essence. And then, have you ever seen these dried shrimp? Have you seen these? In Louisiana, during shrimp season, you can get them, like when you're cashing out at the grocery store, they sell these little bags of them. You just pop them. I guess you had to been there. I don't know. but <laughs> So what I'm going to do with these dry shrimp is I'm going to just sort of bring them back and just kind of let them soak in some warm water. And then I'm going to clean up these Chinese long beans while we rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Welcome back. We're getting bean tonight here on Emerald Live. Soybeans first, now the Chinese long beans. I was going to clean them up and start, and I figured I'd wait for you. Hope you're not falling asleep on the couch. We'll cut these in about three inches long. Now, these originated also in Asia. And uh, basically, they're a little more starchier than regular green beans. But if you can't find these Chinese long beans, what you can do is um, just use regular, you could use regular green beans for this. A fabulous dish. The technique of this, I'm actually frying the beans in the oil first. And why I'm doing that is because I was shown this technique by these brothers that own a Chinese restaurant called the Wong Brothers at my charity, St. Michael's Charity, recent. And I noticed that they were frying the beans first. And what it does, it gives them this very unique, wrinkly kind of effect and texture on them, which you'll see here in a second. So I decided to do my version of it. 
They have a great restaurant called Trey Yen. And you see how they're already, they're starting to wrinkle? Can you see that? See, they're getting, see how they're blistering a little bit like that? They're wrinkling up. Oh yeah, babe. <laughs> so now, while those are getting wrinkled, what I'm gonna do now is take the shrimp that we brought back, the dry shrimp that we just sort of soaked. Oh yeah, I can feel the love already. <laughs> then what you wanna do is make sure that your ingredients you have all together. I have a little garlic, of course, beside the pork that we've got marinating in the soy sauce. Sesame seeds, hoisin sauce. Oh yeah, babe. We'll kick it up with a little crushed pepper and some uh, harachi. This is a hot sauce, harachi. Yeah. All right. So once we get, once we get the beans wrinkled, now we'll take the beans out. And then we'll just put the dish together. See how wrinkled they are? Interesting, huh? Well, I guess you had to been there, I don't know. It's interesting. Now, great dish. Now we're gonna get the oil hot, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that pork in there. That's been marinating for about five or 10 minutes in that soy sauce. And we're gonna just kinda get this nice and brown. I wish you could have smell-o-vision at home. I'd call your cable company and complain. See, we're just kinda browning that now. We got all the flavor of that soy sauce. Now, now we're gonna start building another couple of levels of flavor here. First one is, they gotta be just about brown before we add the garlic because we don't want the garlic to burn. So we're just about there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you another little technique. And that technique is this. See on the outer edges I got the oil? What we're gonna do is take the crushed pepper like this. You see in the oil? What's that's doing is extracting all of the nice flavor in the pepper. Add a little salt, a little salt to the beans. All right, now we're ready to go here. Pork is brown. Oh boy. Sesame seeds, garlic, dry shrimp, now they're wet shrimp, the beans, and then what we'll do now, we'll add the harachi. And the hoisin sauce, watch this. Smells great, doesn't it? I know. If I was walking by the neighborhood and I had these smells coming out of someone's house, I would definitely knock on the door. Excuse me, them dried shrimp of yours are still smelling good. So there, what you have, folks, an incredible Chinese long bean dish with shrimp and hoisin. Right there. Fantastic. This quick little dish that I'm gonna do next is with chickpeas. Yeah. Falafel. You're the man. Falafel. Also called gabanzo beans. I cooked them 
till they were tender, and now I'm draining them. Watch how simple this is. We're gonna add the garbanzos in the food processor. With fresh parsley, some onion. Gotta have some garlic, don't you think? The juice, the juice of a lemon. Then I have cayenne pepper, turmeric, coriander, and cumin. We're gonna add those spices in there. A Little bit of salt. And then what we're gonna do is just sort of puree this. When it's all pureed, I'm gonna put it inside of a dish and sprinkle about a teaspoon of baking soda on on the beans themselves. So you gotta push them down. Now, if yours, if you're doing this at home and it looks like you got too much in here or if it gets too dry, just add a little bit more juice of the lemon. When we come back with beans, another notch! Stick around! in the MRY band. Cliff, Lois, Teddy on drums, and Dr. Gibbs. Right. So a little uh, baking soda right at the end when we took it out of the food processor, very fine. And then I keep it in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to, um, oh, look at this. Huh, they must be trying to sabotage me. That's okay. <laughs> now, what you wanna do, folks, see the consistency of that now? You wanna form these little patties. And we're gonna fry them, and then I'm gonna show you how to make... Put them right inside that basket. Make a couple of these. Then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna fry these and make a tahini sauce. Oh, I love that stuff. Okay. Yeah, one more. Okay, we're gonna fry these now. While those are frying, I'm gonna make a quick tahini sauce. And that is, we're gonna use some garlic. And of course, tahini paste. The falafel is frying. Then, at least the juice of one lemon. H2O. That would be water. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add the juice of another lemon here. So I like it kind of really lemony. And then what we'll do now is we'll just sort of blend this up a little bit. And uh, the tahini paste is gonna make it. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. See how milky it's getting? You see that? So, visualize. <laughs> Falafel. Inside the pita bread. 
You can garnish it with lettuce and tomato. And then I don't know about you guys, but I like that tahini sauce. I like it really, really moist. And then you just eat away. Sound good? All right. I got plenty more beans where that came from. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. in the MLI band. <laughs> Welcome back, Emma Lagasse here. We're busting with beans tonight. <laughs> Falafel. Gotta go back to that, tahini sauce. Hey folks, you know when you puree that, we added the baking soda? If yours happens to be a little loose, maybe added a little more extra lemon juice or whatever, you can always add a few tablespoons of flour and that will also bind it, okay? Let me show you one uh, quick one here. I like to get them a little crispy like this. And I'll just show you real quick. I like to open the pita bread. There's a lot of fun things that you can do with this. What I do is season with salt and pepper my lettuces and tomato. Because I don't know where you get yours. Where I get mine, they don't come seasoned. <laughs> and then what I do is I take a few slices of that. Then I put the falafel like that. I ah, will put two. Oh yeah, babe. See that? Then I take a little bit of the lettuce. And then as I was saying to you, what I like to do is take that sauce and just kind of A little more, huh? Yeah. Keep going, all right. <laughs> so now we got a tahini sandwich. There you have it, folks, okay? Now we're gonna go to white bean land. So many great things that you can do with beans. I got some lean smoked bacon. You could use other different types of pork belly as well, ham. And what I'm gonna do is I'm rendering that out. I took white beans, covered them with water, and I simmered them for an hour. I didn't soak them overnight. Then this is where they're at right now. They're not quite done, but they're just starting to get a little soft. This is when you can really add a lot of flavor to these types of beans, okay? They'll absorb now a lot of flavor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some onion. Just a little bit of salt, cayenne pepper, some garlic, yeah. okay, and I'm going to just cook that for about three, four minutes. You got to start the bacon first because if you start with the onion instead of the bacon, the bacon won't get crisp because of the water of the onion. So that's why you got to start with the bacon first. Get it halfway or three quarters of the way, then you can add your onion. Once we cook that three or four minutes, I'm gonna take just some diced tomato and the juice. Smells, Smells great, huh, already? Just wanna jump in there. <laughs> jump in there with a sponge, forget it. Call in sick. 
Then I'm going to add a couple of bay leaves and some brown sugar. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Watch what happens now when we, when we add the brown sugar. See how it's getting syrupy already? See that? Oh, watch, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Creole mustard. Oh, yeah. Or you can use a other type of grain mustard. So we got a little sweet and sour thing going on right now with some pork fat. Huh, how good is that? <laughs> yeah, I'll have one of those sweet and sour things with pork fat. Now, to kick it up another notch, I'm going to add some cane syrup. You could use molasses, too, but molasses is a lot stronger, so you'd use less if you would. See how syrupy it's getting like that now? Huh? It's just screaming for them beans. I mean, and those beans, look, they're happy. They want to get in there. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little Worcestershire sauce, okay, and a beer. Hey. You know how happy those beans are going to be? Not only are we going to add a beer, but to be fair, we're going to add a little whiskey, too. Yeah. Now the beans go inside there. Oh, you can instantly see. You can instantly see how happy they are. But now what we're going to do is we're going to finish cooking them. Even though they're just a tiny bit tender, now we're going to cook them until they get like that love is happening. That food of love thing. They're getting ready. They stop popping. The starch happens. Stop bubbling. Oh. <laughs> One more ingredient. A little chicken broth. About a cup or two. Just adds to the depth of flavor. All right. Now, while the beans are getting so happy, we got these little small pork chops. What we're going to do is this. We're going to season them up with essence. Both sides, though. Oh, I hate one side of tasting food. <laughs> we go to a restaurant and get one side of tasting food. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm almost demanding my money back. Or at least half. <laughs> I mean, I want the full deal. Now. I'm going to add a little cornstarch to this flour. What it does is it really gives, when you're dredging things like fish and these pork chops, particularly when you've got to cook them for a longer period of time in the pan, it gives it a wonderful little thing. But I don't know where you get your cornstarch. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> so now that that's seasoned, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some oil in this little brazier like this. And we're going to dredge these chops, and we're going to start sautéing them. When we come back, oh, baby, another notch. Stick around. Bamming with beans tonight. Okay, so where we left off, got the pork chops. We dredged them in that cornstarch, some essence, flour. Got them sauteing now. 
We turned them over about five or six minutes or so on each side. The beans. You want to, like, just capture all the love in those things. <laughs> Let them cook. Let them get happy. That's what they're doing right here. Look. About an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, once we add all of that stuff, is when you should check them. And we'll check also for the seasoning. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, do, do they need salt? Do they need pepper? You have to taste them. If you want to use your family as guinea pigs, go ahead. Mm. To me, a little salt, some pepper. <laughs> now, you still peppering over there? Now, one other thing. At the end of, uh, if you can, what you're cooking with, and I cook with a lot of bay leaves, but you want to be sure to discard them before you serve them. Uh, you, they don't digest well, trust me. <laughs> hey, try one if you don't believe me. So, what I also did is I took and very thinly sliced some onions, a couple of small onions, okay? sliced really thin, and what I've done is I've just cooked them down until they caramelized, and all the sweetness comes out of them. Delicious. I know, I <laughs> walk around with stuff like that in my pocket all the time, <laughs> you know. So when you're ready, yeah, these are about medium. We're gonna take them out. Oh, you're playing with my emotions. <laughs> I mean, you saw the picture earlier in the fridge. You wonder why I'm on an emotional roller coaster ride, right? We're going to take those out. Just joking. Now we're ready for business. Huh? Huh? When you're ready to ring the dinner bell, <laughs> here's what you do. I like to take the beans. Okay, that's done. Let's take that off. Take the beans. We'll go right inside the platter. Oh, wait, I'm going to show you something else. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. This is kind of like between baked beans and stewed white beans, you know? Slow cooked like this. Now right at the end, once I get the beans going here, what I like to do, is I like to take the chops. Oh, Emerald, so messy. Don't want the food police to see that. <laughs> then, I just simply take the chops like this. <laughs> Works for me. Use a little time like that, a little essence, a little chives, bam, bam. Oh, wait. Then you say to yourself, self, how do I kick it up another notch? The caramelized onions. Put them right on top of the old pork chops like this, you see? You should feel the love in here. Yeah. 
Now you have it, folks. You want to talk about a great dish. Beautiful pork chops with caramelized onions on some simmered white beans. Adzuka. Right? Adzuka. You ever hear that? They're from Asia as well. And they are a red bean. See that? Adzuka or Adzuki? Adzuki. Adzuki, excuse moi. <laughs> That's Jill, our culinary guru over there. So these are used a lot, but what, what we're going to do is we're going to make an, an interesting red bean paste, which you go, like you think about and you go, where was he last night? <laughs> and what we do is you soak these with water and your foot. <laughs> it's kind of a two for one deal. You know, you get a car wash and a dish all at once. Excuse me one second. Who said I had dirty feet, right, Doc? That's right. <laughs> now, once they soak overnight, 24 hours, okay, then what you do is you're going to put them on the stove and you're going to slowly cook them, that much water, for about two hours, okay? And then they look like this, okay? Once they cool, yeah, you see how, like, Tasty a little bit they get like that, they're soft, okay? Now, once they get to that stage, we're gonna strain them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add them back to the pot with almost a couple of cups of sugar. Okay? And then what we're going to do is just kind of cook it. Well, you'll see. When we come back, I'm going to show you what this looks like with incredible vanilla bean ice cream. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Dips. Dr. Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Did you eat the chips? Good, huh? Saps. Anyhow, sugar, red beans. Then I left. <laughs> but I'm back. Now, what you want to do to finish these, we're going to add some lard to this. How can it not be good? Sugar and lard. Yeah. All right. You let this cook for another half an hour. The beans really start getting soft and smushy. And then they turn into this paste. And it's a red bean paste. And it's sweet. And it's really delicious. Here's my favorite way that I like to serve it. I make this simple vanilla bean ice cream, okay? A little scoop like that. Ah, why not? Okay? And then you can garnish it with whatever you like. For me, with this combination, I do some toasted peanuts, but you could use any nut you want. 
And then this stuff here is really delicious. This is that sugared ginger. Oh, yeah, not Mary Ann, ginger. <laughs> so I add a little bit of ginger like that. And then I take a little bit of that red bean paste. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good stuff, let me tell you. A little bit of that red bean paste and a little bit of mint. And there is a beautiful dessert <laughs> using beans. So how's the pork chops? How the pork chops, all right? With simmered white beans. Ladies, how was it? Good stuff, huh? I want to make this. Edamame, all kinds of beans we had. Hey, folks, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. And guess what? Ha-ha! <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow!